and welcome back to Voyage of a Time Wanderer. Today I am here to do the Victorian Literature Journey Tag. So the Victorian Literature Journey Tag was created by one of the Victober hosts this year and that is Roz from Skelly Dandeline About with Books and she was kind enough to tag me in this and it's really just a tag celebrating Victorian literature as would be expected from a tag during Victober and it is uh, inspired by the Shakespeare Journey Tag which was uh, done during Shaketember by the hosts of Shaketember. So there are a bunch of questions in this tag that just give me a chance to kind of explore my journey with Victorian literature, how I got started, what are some of my favorite books, what are some of my favorite characters, uh, what advice would I give to someone just starting with Victorian literature, and a whole lot more. So I'm really excited to be doing this tag. I really wanted to get it done before the end of October because it's just the perfect time of year to talk about and share uh, a love for Victorian literature. So I've got a couple of my favorite Victorian books here physically and the rest I will be putting on the screen and without further ado I will just get into the questions. So the first question is what was your first experience with Victorian literature and how was it? So there were two works of Victorian literature that I really enjoyed as a kid and that is Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. I was like obsessed with pirates as a little kid and so I read this book probably when I was or 11-ish. Um, I remember distinctly that it was the first book that I ever checked out of the teen section at the library so I felt very grown up and it was a beautiful edition that I remember being kind of illustrated throughout and maybe having some little uh, illustrations and stuff in the margin. So I remember really enjoying my reading experience of Treasure Island. And then the other piece of Victorian literature that I remember reading as a kid and having read to me uh, is A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson's Burnett. This is technically an Edwardian book, but a proto version of it was published as a short story during the Victorian era, so the kernel of the idea uh, was there from the Victorian era, so I kind of count it as one of uh, my early exposures to Victorian literature. But as an adult, my experience with Victorian literature really began thanks to the wonderful Sherlock Holmes. I got really into all things Sherlock Holmes around 2010, 2011, after the Robert Downey Jr. movies came out and the BBC modern adaptation Sherlock. Uh, I was really a big fan of both of those franchises and I was seeing more and more references to the original source material kind of in online fan discussions. People were sharing quotes from the original stories and making guesses about what different episodes might be based off of how they were riffing off of short story titles, or there might be a prop in the back of a scene that people were uh, cluing in was a reference to the Sherlock Holmes canon, and so I knew that if I was going to continue being a Sherlock Holmes fan, I had to actually read the Sherlock Holmes uh, books and stories. So starting in early 2012, I started reading Sherlock Holmes, and that is really where my Victorian literature journey began. Uh, it's also kind of where my audiobook journey began because that is when I discovered LibriVox. I remember downloading some of the Sherlock Holmes books and stories and listening to them while I was uh, skating to university, making my winter commute. Yes, I used to skate to university. And that is really when I started reading and loving the Sherlock Holmes stories. And because most of the Holmes canon is short stories, it made Victorian literature feel really approachable to me. This is basically like growing up Encyclopedia Brown. You know, the stories are 10, 15, 20 pages, so it didn't feel like I was uh, starting some super intimidating classic. It was just reading some good mystery novels and mystery short stories. So I definitely really enjoyed reading Sherlock Holmes, but it didn't kick off a love of Victorian literature in general. Uh, it just really started my appreciation for the time period. My next dip into Victorian literature came in December 2013 when I read Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Around this time I was really wanting to uh, broaden my reading tastes and get through some of kind of the famous classics. So I thought A Christmas Carol would be a great place to start with him knowing that it was uh, a very short accessible work rather than one of his lengthy tomes. I really enjoyed A Christmas Carol and I got excited about Victorian literature and I immediately started Oliver Twist and I found that book a real struggle to get through. 
I think it took me at least a year to read it and it kind of made me question whether I was even cut out to read Victorian literature or if it was something that I was going to enjoy at all. So then finally the book that I consider really to be the catalyst for starting my love of Victorian literature is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I know this is a really common answer to this question uh, but it's true for me as well. I finally picked up Jane Eyre in February of 2017 and I absolutely blasted through it in just a couple of days and I really really loved my reading experience of it, especially the atmosphere that the author was able to create. So from that point on, after finishing Jane Eyre, I was really hooked on Vicklet. It was a consistent part of my reading life, and within a year or so after finishing Jane Eyre, I had tried a whole bunch of new-to-me Victorian authors and was finding out who I really enjoyed. So I think within that first year of finishing uh, Jane Eyre, I had read books by the rest of the Bronte sisters, I had read Elizabeth Gaskell, I'd read Trollope, I'd read Mrs. Oliphant, I'd read uh, Oscar Wilde, I'd read uh, Robert Louis Stevenson, and was starting again on some Dickens. So that was really when my love for Victorian literature exploded and I found authors that I really clicked with. So that's kind of a long-winded answer to this first question, but my journey into loving Victorian literature also took a while and had a few kind of false starts. But thankfully I kept trying and I did uh, eventually get to the point where I am today, which is just absolutely loving Victorian literature. Question two is, has the reading of a Victorian novel ever brought you to tears? And if so, tell us more. I'm not like a huge crier when I read books. Uh, ironically, the only books that I like consistently cry at are historical romance novels when there's a big declaration of love, then I'm like sobbing. But other than that, I don't cry a ton when reading books, so there's nothing that sticks out in my mind as like a really vivid memory of crying over a Victorian novel. I'm pretty sure that I cried at the climax slash ending of A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, which is my all-time favorite Victorian novel. And there might have been a few scenes in Wives and Daughters or Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell and possibly Bleak House by Charles Dickens. Those are the books where I like really distinctly remember being affected by a sad scene, but I'm not sure if there were tears or not. So those would be the books that I would guess I was most affected by. But there's no memory of myself making like a really dramatic crying scene during reading any Victorian novel. Question number three is, are there any people who have played a significant role in your Victorian literature journey? And of course that would have to be the booktube community as a whole. Uh, there have just been so many people who have made videos about their favorite Victorian literature and shared book recommendations that have absolutely changed the trajectory of my reading life. And in particular, I'm thinking of the original hosts of Victober, which is Katie from Books and Things and Kate Howe. Their absolutely endless enthusiasm for Victorian literature and their passion for authors like Dickens, Trollope, and Gaskell really encouraged me to keep trying uh, different Victorian novels to find authors that suited my taste. Question number four is, do you have a favorite TV or movie adaptation of a Victorian novel? And is there any adaptation that you would really like to see made? So my very favorite adaptation is of course North and South. I'm guessing this is probably a pretty common answer uh, because it is absolutely adaptation perfection. It's one of the rare instances where I have enjoyed a movie adaptation or a TV adaptation more than I have enjoyed the actual book, which is uh, definitely not very common for me and something that makes this adaptation so special. The chemistry between the two main actors is so believable and they also did just a beautiful job with the cinematography. My other favorite adaptation would probably be the 2011 version of Great Expectations. I watched this with my sister over the Christmas holidays as it was airing for the first time, so this was before I had really gotten into Victorian literature. I knew nothing about the plot of Great Expectations, so Every episode we were being absolutely gobsmacked by what was happening. Uh, every end of episode cliffhanger had us on the edge of our seats. And it was one of those adaptations where I went, wow, if this is the sort of stories that are being contained within Victorian novels, I really need to get started on reading these. As for what adaptation I would like to see made, and I had one book that came immediately to mind, and that is Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell. This is one of my top 10 Victorian novels and tragically there is no adaptation of it, and even more tragically there was an adaptation made by the BBC in the 1960s 
but all of the footage of that has been lost. So there is no copy of that uh, that is known to be in existence. There's rumblings that may be somewhere deep in a BBC archives. There might still be some episode clips, but uh, for us mere mortals, we have nothing to go off of. And I think that this book has so many of the elements that would make for a fantastic uh, miniseries adaptation. We've got mystery, we've got murder, we've got suspense, we've got adventure, we have romance, we have intrigue, heartbreak, and characters that you can get really invested into. It's absolutely a shame to me that there isn't an adaptation of this made yet, and so if there are any uh, TV producers that happen to be watching, check out Mary Barton for the script of your next hit period drama miniseries. Question number five is, which Victorian character do you resemble the most or do you identify with? And I found answering this question really quite difficult. I feel like a lot of Victorian characters live a life that's so different from my life today that it's kind of hard to identify deeply with them. I can connect really easily with a lot of them and get emotionally invested in their stories, but I don't really see my own life reflected in many of them. I think two characters that come to mind is um, Alicia Audley from Lady Audley's Secret. She kind of is a bit of a stubborn tomboy character and so I like that about her and she's not afraid of kind of standing up to characters that she doesn't like which I respected quite a bit about her in this story. But I think the character that I would say I relate the most to would be the titular Elizabeth from Elizabeth von Arnhem's Elizabeth and her German Garden and then uh, its sequel A Solitary Summer. Elizabeth is a fairly introverted character who has a lot of internal thoughts and her favorite thing to do is to take a book from her library and go sit out in her garden with a cup of tea, which absolutely sounds like my dream life as well. And particularly in A Solitary Summer, I found a lot of my own thoughts and feelings reflected in the voice of Elizabeth. Question number six is, do you have any favorite moment, scene, or line from Victorian literature and tell us about it or read it out loud to us? This was another one that I found a little bit challenging because a lot of my favorite scenes are very spoilery for the end of the book. Uh, so I can't give some of my very favorites because I don't want to ruin people's reading experience. But I have four examples that I will share that don't spoil anything. The first being the scene in chapter five of The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. And that is when the characters are visiting Wildfell Hall and see uh, Helen's painting studio. I just love the description of the paintings and I think she is such a unique character for making her money from painting. I haven't really come across any other professional female artists in Victorian literature and so I just love that about her and I love the descriptions of her painting studio and the paintings that she's working on. I also love like any description of the interior uh, domestic life in 221B Baker Street. I just think the way that uh, Doyle describes uh, the interior and all the weird little knickknacks and stuff that Holmes has in 221B Baker Street is, is absolutely charming. So I love those moments of the book where Holmes and Watson are at home together and discussing the case and everything. Then I love the descriptive writing of Mary Elizabeth Braddon, uh, particularly in the beginning few chapters of Lady Audley's Secret when she's describing Audley Court. And so I have one particular passage that I'll read that's from the beginning of chapter three, Hidden Relics. The same August sun, which had gone down behind the waste of waters, glimmered redly upon the broad face of the old clock over that ivy-covered archway which leads into the gardens of Audley Court. A fierce and crimson sunset. The mullioned windows and the twinkling lattices are all ablaze with the red glory. The fading light flickers upon the leaves of the limes in the long avenue and changes the still fish pond into a sheet of burnished copper. Even into those dim recesses of briar and brushwood, amidst which the old well is hidden, the crimson brightness penetrates in fitful flashes till the dank weeds and the rusty iron wheel and broken woodwork seem as if they were flecked with blood. The lowing of a cow in the quiet meadows, the splash of a trout in the fish pond, the last notes of a tired bird, the creaking of wagon wheels upon the distant road, every now and then breaking the evening silence, only made the stillness of the place seem more intense. It was almost oppressive, this twilight stillness. The very repose of the place grew painful from its intensity, 
and you felt as if a corpse must be lying somewhere within that grey and ivy-covered pile of a building, so death-like was the tranquility of all around. As the clock over the archway struck eight, a door at the back of the house was softly opened and a girl came out into the gardens. I just love the way she describes uh, nature and architecture. I think she is one of my very favorite descriptive Victorian authors and that scene in particular stands out in my memory. And then I have a quote that I'm going to read off of my laptop and that is from The Romance of a Shop by Amy Levy and it's just a really brief one sentence that has really stuck with me and it is Already womanlike, she had taken him under her wing, and henceforward the minutest detail of his existence would be more precious to her than anything on earth. And I just think that that is the most beautiful description of falling in love with someone that I think I've almost ever read in Victorian literature. Question number seven is, does any Victorian literature still intimidate you, and if so, what or why? And yes, definitely, I'm still intimidated by some Victorian literature. I still get intimidated every time I start a Dickens just because I know it's going to be such a lengthy read and besides A Tale of Two City, I've never gotten through a Dickens in like less than a year. <laughs> so uh, I know that I am settling down into a long-term reading project whenever I start a Dickens. And I also find that his writing style I find sometimes a bit convoluted and his use of really metaphorical language sometimes I can get a bit lost in so I know I'm going to have to focus when I'm reading a Dickens. I have read a couple Thomas Hardy now but I still find him kind of intimidating I think because I know a lot of his books and subject matter is quite uh, dark or gritty and depressing so I know that uh, it's not a book that's going to have a happy resolution at the end so I really have to be in the right mood to go into one of his novels. And then George Eliot I would say is the unread Victorian author that I am the most intimidated by. Uh, I've heard a lot of people describe her works as like challenging but rewarding and I guess that has me fairly intimidated about her writing style because uh, I'm worried it's going to be, I don't know, too tricky for me. <laughs> Uh, but I am tackling that fear and I'm planning to buddy read Middlemarch next month, which I'm very excited about and I'm hoping that will make uh, my first exposure to George Eliot significantly less intimidating because I'll have a whole group of booktube friends that I'm reading it with. Question number eight is what tips would you give to someone who is early on with their Victorian literature journey? And so I have a couple pieces of advice that I think would be helpful for someone who is newer to Victorian literature. The first is to try lots of different authors and subgenres of Victorian literature to find what really suits you. Uh, Victorian literature, although we talk about it as Victorian literature, is uh, just a time period of books and so there is just as much of a broad range of different types of books that fall under the Victorian literature umbrella as there are with uh, modern day publications. So if you like mysteries, there's Victorian mysteries. If you like romances, there's Victorian romances. If you like suspenseful kind of thrillers, there are sensation novels. If you like horror, there are Victorian horror novels. Uh, if you like historical fiction, there is Victorian historical fiction. So don't just read one or two Victorian books and think that Victorian literature isn't for you. Uh, I think anyone could find uh, an author or a subgenre of Victorian literature uh, that they would really enjoy. And then my second tip is kind of related to that and it's on the author side. Don't feel like you have to read all of like the big authors before trying more obscure Victorian authors and titles. I definitely fell into this trap at the beginning of my Victorian literature journey where I felt like I had to like read all the Dickens and read all the Brontes before I could try uh, other authors that weren't as well known. Like I felt like I had to get through the big like classic classics before I could just explore Victorian literature as a genre and it did bog me down a little bit uh, because I just didn't want to read like back-to-back -back Dickens and I don't enjoy Charlotte Bronte as much as some of the other authors so I got stuck you know feeling like I had to finish Dickens entire canon and I had to read all of Charlotte Bronte's works before I could just uh, enjoy exploring other authors and I would definitely recommend not doing that uh, certainly try those big famous authors, they are famous for a reason, but if their writing isn't suiting you, feel free to pick up uh, lesser known Victorian authors uh, and try to find someone whose writing style really clicks with you. I wish I had found Mary Elizabeth Braddon way sooner into my Victorian literature journey because I just love the way she writes and I love sensation novels which uh, I put off exploring for the longest time and now I am just trying to catch up on. 
Another tip would definitely be to try audiobooks for those uh, authors that really intimidate you. I find I can understand Dickens so much better if I listen to an audiobook than if I try to read it physically myself. And there are some really great narrators both on LibriVox and uh, through my library and on Audible that I have found that really bring the characters to life in a way that makes the reading experience of these longer books so much more enjoyable. And then my last tip would just be to expect a different reading pace slash time commitment than you're used to with contemporary books. I can rip through a contemporary like mystery novel or uh, just some contemporary literature uh, really quickly, you know, it's a couple of days and I'm finished reading it, whereas some Victorian literature it takes me a month or two months or even longer for some of the Dickens books. Uh, so definitely some of them I read through really quickly, but I definitely go into a lot of the longer Victorian novels expecting it's going to be a multi-week reading commitment. And then I pick up a few other books uh, on the side throughout that time frame, but definitely don't feel discouraged if it's taking you way longer to finish a Victorian novel than you're used to when reading contemporary books. Then question number nine is what is your top recommended read for other readers of Victorian literature? And ironically the book that I want to recommend is not my very favorite. Victorian novel. My favorite Victorian novel is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, but uh, because this is historical fiction set in the French Revolution, I always feel kind of guilty about it being my favorite Victorian novel because it's not even set in the Victorian period. Uh, so the book that I would definitely recommend, particularly for people who are just starting out in their Victorian literature journey, is Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. I really do think it is like the perfect Victorian novel except for the tragedy of Gaskell unfortunately passing away before she could finish those last couple precious chapters. Um, but if you ignore the fact that it is kind of unfinished but you know where it would have ended up, uh, it really is such a wonderful, wonderful novel. Lots of cozy domestic scenes, some romance, exploration of the differences in social classes, and a few plot lines of good old-fashioned Victorian literature drama. And then a slightly more obscure recommendation would be to check out Elizabeth von Arnhem's earlier works which do count as being Victorian. Just her first like four or five novels count as Victorian novels and then the rest are 20th century. Uh, and so I would highly recommend Elizabeth and her German Garden and its companion A Solitary Summer. Both of these books are fascinating as proto-feminist texts but also have von Arnhem's signature wit and absolutely beautifully descriptive nature writing. So those are my answers to the Victorian literature journey tag. Question number 10 is to tag some people and uh, obviously if you're interested I would love to see you make a tag video as well or you can uh, answer some of the questions in the comments. I have so enjoyed watching other people's versions of this tag throughout Victober and so I hope you also enjoyed learning a little bit more about my story and journey with Victorian literature and until next time enjoy wandering through the pages of a good book. Bye!